When did you start to work for yourself? Yeah, I started to work 30 years ago this June. And at $90 a month and $75 for the use of my private automobile. Wasn't a whole lot of money, but that was a good old days. I went to work for this department in uh, 44. And uh, I was out uh, on patrol one day. And <clears throat> over in Merkerson Ranch, north of Menard. And uh, I was walking along a bluff, I like that bluff there. And no boy cut down on me about three times. It was 30 odd six, and I did a little of sheer rolling, I'll tell you for sure. And I finally got to him, and I picked him up. And when I got back to town, well, that's when I ordered me some green uniforms from Langford Brothers in Abilene, Texas. I was dressed in Texas. I started to work in 1947. I think it was around $160. Furnished your own car and wore just anything you want. There's no uniform. And uh, they paid you five cents a mile to be five, and eventually it went to six cents a mile for the use of your car. I started to work in '53 at $220 a month. And I was a little more fortunate than you fellas. They was purchasing uniforms at that time, but I was driving my own car at six cents a mile. I'm going to tell you a little uh, story about, uh, it's a true story. Not a big story, but it's a true story. Uh, I was coming in one night all about 11 o'clock, been up patrolling in Slacker County, and. Going along, I looked out to the left and I <clears throat> noticed the light working in the timber lines out there. So these old boys working on down the way, and a little bit I heard a 22 far, and so I pulled under the hill, went off down there and cut my light, came back up to the top of the hill, got out and walked out in the pasture. And so uh, they come rolling and bouncing along there and working this light. So there I was, I was out there, and I couldn't get back to the road. And one thing to do this praise of the Lord that they didn't see me, and I just fell on the ground and spread it out just as flat as I could. And that grass, it had pretty good grass, and I was hit there. And luck would have it, they turned to the left, and when they turned to the left and started off, well, I got up and went up and got in the back of the pickup, eased up there, they going over the roof, you know, and I eased up there and I sat down in the corner, and I rode with them for about, uh, Oh, I don't know, I would say uh, a good half hour or longer, and they uh, spotted a deer, a big 10-point buck. That old buck standing off out there looking at him, and that old boy's holding the light, the driver's holding the light, shining through there, and he says, uh, over to the right, up a little, <laughs> over to the left, and kept directing the lights. You no, know, he said, want to hit him right between the eyes. A little bit, well, he had one of those old Craig, <laughs> Rifles, yeah. and that thing went off sound like a cannon, and he just gutted that deer. Well, the deer turned and run off down there, and about that time I bailed out, and I went around, and he had his old arm out the window, and I hit him on the arm and said, you got him, didn't he? He said, oh, my God, Craig. Well, I'd never met the man before. <laughs> well, like the rest of you, when you tell these stories through the years, there's usually so many humorous ones, it's hard to say which one might be the funniest after all. But one time, the situation you were speaking of, Jack, on the... Nature's River, on the Angelina River with me one time, and picked up the fellow's hook nets and knew the man was standing there watching me and seeing what was going on. And I was making conversation with him and never did accuse him of those being his nets. I just uh, piled them all up and talked to him a few minutes and asked him, I said, uh, would you have a little uh, gas I could buy from you? He thought, I guess I want to put it in my motor. So I... Uh, he said, yes, yes, he went over and got a can and let me have some gasoline. And I walked over and poured, him on his, poured it on his nets and set him on fire. And he went back into town. He said, I've met something down on the creek today. He said, that fellow something else. He said, not only took my nets away from me, he said he got my gasoline and burned them up. <laughs> Jim, uh, how about that time you got after them old boys out there? And uh, you was horseback and you, you got off the, and left your horse. And uh, he lost him all night. Oh, that's that like froze to death? Yeah. 
Oh, that's back out of Old West country. I, they was coming in there, dropping off on the road, walking in there, headlighting. I tried to catch them out for several weeks, and finally I went in there horseback one night, old cold, misty night. Them old boys finally showed up. I got up pretty close to them, and I just tied my horse to a little thicket. Afraid to pick up his eyes and got to follow them. I followed them, I guess, a dirty mile along three or four hundred yards behind them. They finally shot, killed a big old skillet headed doe. I walked up on them while they was started gutting that old thing. Of course, had a little stone feed there right at first. <laughs> Gathered them up, and I, I, I let them to believe that I had my horse just that close by, you know, that I'd take care of the doe. Y'all just meet me at the courthouse in the morning. I went to hunting that horse, and I hunted him about two or three hours. I just give it up. Now, I wanted to build me a little far, and I was about halfway afraid to, because I was afraid them old boys, I knew they could still be in the past, and didn't want them to know I'd lost. <laughs> I finally, after daylight, I walked out the road, just <laughs> caught a ride, went back to town, got my car, and come out there, and I didn't get my horse till way up 10, 11 o'clock that day, I guess. Like I never found it. The game wardens of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department are a dedicated group of men combining the wisdom and experience of the older men with the youth and vigor of the beginners. Gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you uh, on behalf of the law enforcement staff to the Parks and Wildlife Department as future game wardens. I'd like to say that uh, you're to be congratulated uh, as your achievement thus far. I understand that we had some 600 applicants and you are the top out of this 600, the 25 that we selected to represent the Parks and Wildlife Department in the field as game wardens. You will be uh, under a tremendous strain for the next four and a half months, and I sincerely hope that each and every one of you uh, come through this training as a top-notch game warden. Uh, if we didn't believe this, you wouldn't be sitting here right today. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department operates one of the toughest training academies in the United States. Each candidate receives 950 hours of law enforcement training and must be in top mental and physical condition. Only the best successfully complete the course. The game warden's primary duty is to enforce the laws relating to game, fish, water pollution, and the Texas Water Safety Act. So the trainees spend many hours studying these subjects, but that is just the beginning. Today's law enforcement officer must be thoroughly trained in the correct way to enforce the law. He must know and understand the procedures involving arrests, search and seizure, gathering evidence, patrols, citations and courtrooms is in the approach of your boat to the fisherman boat, some of you are speaking or talking too soon. Your approach is most important, equally important information you pass to... The game the warden is carefully trained for his role in contacting hunters, well fishermen, and people enjoying all kinds of outdoor Remember activities. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. How's it going? Fine. You having much luck? Having a little bit. I'm W.D. Blackman, state game warden. I'd like to check your license, please. Sure. He should always be a gentleman, unless the situation oh, demands right. otherwise. Then he must be capable of taking care of himself and always in control. Thank you. Now watch it. Don't head. But even then, he must use only the right amount of force. <laughs> You're going to be held responsible for maintaining... He is well trained in the proper maintenance and use of all types of firearms. ...of these weapons. Any repairs to be made to them will be done by authorized personnel only. Up command, you will draw, fire one round from the 
Crouch position and hold for your weapon. Okay, you're going to have to do a lot to of carry on his job successfully. He uses a wide variety of equipment and must know how to care for this equipment himself. Radio communications, letters, records, and reports are all essential elements of his job. He must also help to inform the public of the department's many responsibilities and his role in enforcing game, fish, water safety, and water pollution laws. This department makes available to you. Approximately one-third of a game warden's time is spent enforcing the Texas Water Safety Act, in effect, helping to save lives on the public waters of the state. He has the responsibility for patrolling Texas waters to check for boating safety equipment in operation and boat registrations, as well as game and fish violations. It's on a cold day, raise your cold start, push your choke, start your engine. And he is well trained in boating safety and operation. And make sure. Now, see, it took a few seconds for the water to start coming out of the water pump. It's got a tail tail. Make sure each engine is pumping. That means you've got circulation. Your motor won't burn up. The game warden not only helps boaters in distress but is also called upon for search and rescue work. When a tragedy occurs, such as a boating accident or drowning, the game warden is often the first at the scene. He is among those best trained and equipped for these emergencies. Okay, work your tarpaulin under him, man. That's good. body to the dock. You just leave it wrapped up in the tarp and wait till the ambulance attendants get there and then they'll take care of it. You've already done your job and that's good. That's the way we want it done. A game warden's training even includes experiences on the realistic scenes of mock disasters at the Civil Defense and Rescue Center. Three people on uh, the second floor. Y'all stay there. Run to help catch you. I'm coming down. Yeah. Let me go down. Yeah, I'm going to go down and help catch you. Go ahead back and get some splints. What are those splints? Him out. Have they got plenty of people in there helping them kill up one of you? check this man. Most every kind of emergency procedure is part of his background before he is commissioned. Down one at a time. Starting to your left. Anybody here? Okay, next man. Rescue, is anybody here? Rescue, is anybody here? After graduation, a game warden is on call 24 hours a day. He is assigned to a specific territory in one of 27 districts. The game warden's regular work is sometimes routine and thankless, but it is all part of his service to the public. People need the relaxation and enjoyment of our recreational natural resources, our wildlife, 
our fish, our water. The game warden is primarily responsible to enforce the laws to protect these resources for our use now and for future generations. Another major responsibility of the game warden is to prevent illegal fishing. On some of our large lakes, where illegal fishermen operate on a big scale, it's necessary to make surprise raids. On a raid, a group of wardens thoroughly search a lake for illegal nets, traps, and trot lines. A warden working alone is unable to do this completely. When an illegal fishing operation is effectively put out of business in this manner, it means that more money must be spent for more gear, which, just as before, is likely to be confiscated and destroyed by parks and wildlife wardens. So why do people take fish by breaking the law? Well, they can make a lot of money in a short time by selling protein-rich fish. But every fish that the illegal fisherman takes out of our public waters is one less for the sportsman who complies with the laws. So removing these nets is hard, dirty work, but necessary to maintain good fishing. On the coast. Uh, 50, 32, 50, 87. Go ahead. I have a blow on a net up here. I need you to call 5210. Over. The Texas coastline is the third longest in the nation. It's the duty of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department's game wardens to enforce the laws concerning hunting, fishing, and water safety in this area, just as they do inland.
see what they have. Okay. How y'all doing? Okay, hey, how you? Eric, you can check out the fishing license, please. All right. Bill, I'll be up in the cabin. Okay. How long y'all been out? Eight days. Man, you're glad to get back in, aren't you? Sure are. Okay. Thank you, man. Ray, the Captain Sloan stops. That's right. Uh, we got an order here from the judge. It's ordering your shrimp seized. It'll be turned over to the court. And after we unload you, we'll get our three bids, unload you, and we'll go over and she'll read you your rights and we'll go on from there. Get you out as soon as we can. Okay, I understand. All confiscated shrimp are put up for bid, and the money obtained is deposited in the special game and fish fund for continued conservation work. Texas has one of the largest shrimp fleets in the nation, and in Texas, shrimping is the most valuable fishery. In a 10-year span, shrimp have more than quadrupled in price. What'd you kids do today? Well, I got my report card. How about you? Oh, I got sick. I didn't get my report card. Sick? What's the matter with you? Oh, I have a stomach ache. Stomach ache? Mm. You okay now? Yeah, okay, I guess so. Yes, just a minute. Glenn, it's for you. Yep. Brother, who is it? Yeah, hello, Trevor, what's going on? Yep, how long ago? Okay. You get a description of the vehicle or anything? Okay. There's some corn, darling. Okay. I don't know what he's doing. Get a license line. number or anything? Okay. Well, I'm on the way out there. I'm on the way right now. All right, okay. bye. Aren't you going to eat supper with us first? I've got to go to work. We'll see y'all later. Say, Miss Meatloaf. Eighteen will be ten six on McGregor Lane. Gray Chevrolet pickup, Texas license AC seven four nine six. Two male occupants aboard. State game warden, move around, place your hands on the tailgate, pickup, please. Nice looking buck you have, there. Sir, move around, place your hands on the tailgate, pickup. Stay right there till I tell you to move. 
Now, what are you going to do with my gun? I don't believe you can take your gun. What are you going to do with my gun? The gentlemen were stopped for killing a deer out here at night. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to have an attorney present during any questioning. Do you understand each of these rights? What's going to happen to me, officer? Do you understand what I've told you, sir? Now, well, I understand. What's going to happen? Do you have any identification on you? Do you no, have sir, any I don't have any identification. Let's see your identification, please. Who's the owner of this vehicle? Who's I'm the owner name? of the truck. All right, sir. We're going to go down and see the judge. Let him take care of this matter right now. What's all this going to cost? You take the pickup and follow me down to the judge's office, sir. You get in the front seat of my car and accompany me. I was just well, going to How much is this going to cost? We'll go down and talk to the judge about it. Y'all get in the pickup and follow me on down to the Well, I'm just going to the right. Does that mean that I have to go to? These men are much more. They're civic workers, classroom lecturers, service club speakers, teachers of hunter safety, information sources to the public and the press, dedicated conservationists serving all who share their appreciation for Texas bountiful wildlife and natural resources. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department is proud of these officers of the outdoors. The Texas Game Warden. <laughs> 